What's up guys? Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video we're going to talk about how we can apply different materials to objects inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first off let's talk about how we can enable or um, set up our viewport so that we can see materials inside of Rhino. Right, because by default you kind of go into this wireframe mode and you can't actually see any faces let alone any materials. So what we want to do is I'm going to start by just double clicking on this perspective mode in order to maximize that. But then we're just going to drop down and we're going to go into render mode right here. What rendered mode is going to do is it's actually going to show us the materials inside of our model. And so now let's take a look at some ways that we can add materials to objects in our model in Rhino. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and select an object. Notice how when we select an object this is going to pop up um, or change the menu options over here on the right hand side of the page. So notice how if I click off of this some of these don't exist in here but if I click on an individual object these are going to exist. And so inside of the object properties, for example, notice how when we have an object selected, there's an option in here for material. And so under material, what we have is we have the option to apply different materials to our objects. And so there's a few different ways that we can create and apply materials to objects inside of Rhino. So first off, notice that we have options in here to use layer material, as well as you can just apply a material individually to an object inside of Rhino. So um, let's say that we just wanted to apply a quick material to this object. So we can just click on this button right here for click or use a new material. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop down a little menu that has a few different options. So there's an option to import from the material library. So Rhino has a library of materials that you can apply to an object. There's also an option to create a PBR material from texture files. That's going to be more for rendering. We're not going to worry too much about it in this video. Then there's also options down here for different presets. And so these presets are going to have different settings that make them look different ways, right? So you can make objects look metal, you can make objects look paint, all those different things in here. So for now, I'm just going to create a custom material. Now we're just going to adjust the color by clicking on the color box right here. And let's say that we wanted a color to be blue. We can actually select this blue material right here. Notice how as soon as I click on that, this cube is going to be blue. So if I click on OK, notice how we've applied a blue material to this object. So we could also create a separate material and call it something like red and apply it to this next object right here. So you can go through and apply materials individually to different objects inside of Rhino. Or there's another option here, which is you can apply materials to objects based on their layer. So let's say that I was to take all three of these cylinders, I'm just gonna select them and I'm gonna go back into the properties and I'm going to put them on the cylinder layer like this. Well then, with these objects, instead of going in and selecting a material like I did before, so creating a custom material or any of the ones in the drop down, I can also use the option for use layer material right here. And so when I use layer material, what that means is that means that I can apply a material in the layers section right here. So notice how I can click on this little box right here, and then I can select a material, either by creating a new one or selecting one from our list so let's say for example that we wanted this to have like a green so we could create a green material like this and click on ok we're going to go ahead and rename this green right here we're going to click on ok so notice how when i do that all of the objects that i have on the cylinder layer are going to have the green material applied to them right here so this is really powerful because if you have like multiple different metal objects or other things like that and you put them all on a metal layer, they're all going to get the metal material applied to them. Now you do want to be a little bit careful with this because if you're using your layers for something else, um, then sometimes it's not always the best idea to apply materials by layer, but you can definitely do that. And so let's say for example that we wanted all of our boxes to have a layer material assigned to them. We could put those on our boxes layer right here. And for those, we're going to select the option for use layer material. Notice how when I do that, that's going to overwrite the materials that were originally applied to these. But then we can go in to our layers and we can add a new material right here. So in this case, let's go ahead and click the drop down and let's use, we'll go with a black material right here and we'll just call it black and hit the okay button. 
And so for some reason, these cylinders got placed on that layer as well. So we wanna make sure that we put those back on the cylinder layer. But now notice how anything on this layer is going to get a black material and anything over here is going to get a green material. So now we've learned how to apply colors but let's take a look at some of the properties of the custom materials that we have in here. So remember that we created this green material over here, right? But what I wanna do is I wanna take this green material and I'm gonna customize it so that it looks a little bit different, right? Because materials in Rhino have different properties that are gonna affect the way that they look. We're gonna start with these properties and then next we'll look at actual textures. But for now, let's say that we didn't want our green material to be just a custom anymore. Let's say that we wanted this to be a paint material. So if I click on the paint material, notice how my options down below are different. So now for my paint material, I have the options for color and I have the options for glossiness. And notice how if I adjust the glossiness on the right hand side, the material is becoming more glossy inside of my scene. So if you use these custom presets in here, so the metal is gonna be another example, that's gonna give me the ability to adjust the polish as well as apply a bump texture, which could make this look bumpy. So if you use the um, any of these presets in here, then that's going to limit your options, but these are going to be specifically set up to look a certain way, right? So notice how, for example, the plastic is going to look different as well. So you can use this to adjust how frosted or polished your plastic material looks inside of your scene. So you can use these different presets in order to create different kinds of materials inside of Rhino. Uh, notice how if you do go back to your custom material, you do get control over things like your gloss finish. So the glossier and the more reflective you make an object, the more they're going to reflect light inside of your scene. You can also use this to make these transparent like this. And you can also apply texture maps in here, which we'll cover in a separate video, but you can basically bring in your own texture materials in order to create custom textures inside of Rhino. Um, you can also use this to create bumpiness and other things like that. But for now, we're gonna kind of leave these as is. One other thing to note is you can also check this box for self-illumination. If you set the box for, or if you check the box for self-illumination, that's going to make these objects emit light. So you can use this custom materials function in order to create a lot of different kinds of materials inside of Rhino. So we're gonna go ahead and click on okay for right now. And then now let's focus on creating materials that actually have like repeating textures in them, right? So right now we've created colors, but we wanna create something that actually has a texture. So let's say we wanted to apply like a wood material or something like that. That's going to need a little bit more detail than just a color over here. So let's say that for this particular cylinder, we wanted to apply a different material to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this object right here to select it. And then I wanna go over here and click on this option for material. And we're going to click the drop down and click on use a new material. But this time we wanna click on the option for import from material library. And so when we import from material library, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us access to the material library that's built into Rhino that we can use in order to create some materials. So let's say that we wanted to apply a wood material in here. Like, let's say we went with this uh, chestnut polished. So all I have to do is go find that material and click on open. And what that's gonna do is that's going to apply that material to this object inside of Rhino. And notice how it takes a second because it's going through and it's actually applying that material in here. But notice what that did is that actually came in here and that applied that wood material to this surface. Right, and so one thing you might've noticed is this texture is tiling over and over again, right? Like it's too small. And so what it's doing is it's repeating and it doesn't look very realistic. So what we can do though, is we can actually go up to our panels function and there's a textures option right here. What the textures option is going to do is that's going to allow us to adjust the texture images that are applied to materials. In this case, right, we're looking at this chestnut material because that's the material that we've applied in here. Well. If you select the chestnut material from your list and then scroll down, notice how there's an option in here to adjust the size. So if I change the size to like one foot, notice how that texture material is gonna get a lot bigger. So you can use this to adjust that material right here um, on your surface. Now there are some things with the way this tiles back together. I don't wanna get too far into that right now. We can talk about that in a future video, but you can adjust the size of your textures by coming here and adjusting this setting right here. You could also adjust things like the rotation of your material, 
If you wanted to do that, notice how if you do that, these are going to face different directions. So there's a lot more that we can do with mapping um, materials to faces, but we're not gonna worry too much about that for right now. And so up to this point, we've been using, so up to this point, we've been using the little dropdown over here inside of Rhino to apply our materials. Another way that we can do this is we can also go into panels and open up libraries. Libraries is going to allow us to see our render content window like this. So let's say that we wanted to apply a different material to this, like a plastic. So notice how this is linking to our materials folder. Well, I can double click in here and instead of trying to um, find the material from over here, you can just drag these on top of objects. So if I was to drag this burgundy material, notice how I get the little plus in here like this, that's going to apply that burgundy plastic material to this object. So you can use this in order to apply different materials in here really quickly. So you can apply like the sea green or the opaque blue, other things like that, without having to do a whole bunch of dropping down or anything like that. And let's say that we wanted to apply another material, like this crackle material right here. Notice how we can just drag that over here in order to do that. One thing you might wanna think about doing is you might wanna think about taking your textures window and docking it with this other one. That way you can jump between your libraries and your textures really quick and adjust things like your material size really quickly. And so just real quick, notice how right now, um, these objects do have some material properties that are applied to them that look realistic. However, for the final result, um, so for all the like displacement and other things like that, you're going to need to switch over to ray traced mode. And so what, because what this is doing right now is this is kind of previewing what the materials might do in real life. But if you wanna see the way that light actually affects these, you're gonna jump over into ray traced mode right here. Notice how when we do that, we start getting reflections off of our shinier objects. Like for example, notice how now this cylinder is giving me a reflection right here um, so I can see this other object. So to get the real realistic final results of your objects, you're just gonna wanna jump over into that ray trace mode. Notice how, however, when we do that, this is going to take a while to do that because it's having to come in here and actually calculate what light would do in this situation. So notice how it says down at the bottom rendering right here. So it's still calculating the light and because it's still calculating the light, I'm getting a little bit of noise in here. So just note that when you do wanna do your final result, um, while ray traced mode is going to give you a more realistic result, it is going to take a lot longer. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. We're gonna cover things like creating our own custom materials and using PBR maps in the future. But for now, if you're stuck on anything, leave a comment below and let me know. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.